Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Today I'm going to show you a nice technique, more of an old world style finish, using traditional lime marmorino imported from Italy with a three layer lime glaze. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready for today's technique is I've base coated the surface with the quartz primer. Quartz primer is a base coat for lime plasters. Interior, exterior, tints with pigment, never paint, cleans up with soap and water. Uh, the tools and materials, let's see, Marmarino is the plaster we're going to be using. It's, uh, a, there'll be a link to the exact product in the description below because if you just simply search out Marmarino, there's all kinds of different Marmarinos. There's fine, medium, coarse, uh, smooth. So this is a medium marmorino. Again, you'll be able to click on that link and buy it directly. That way there's no confusion in the marketplace because one company will have a medium marmorino, the other company will have a medium marmorino, and you know what? They're nowhere close to the same, what they would, anywhere, ah, nowhere close to each other. Okay, Pavon trial, spatula, marmorino. Marmorino is a lime-based plaster that tints with lime-compatible tints. Never use universal colorants and never use paint. For this technique, though, we're going to be using white because we're going to be uh, putting a lime compatible glaze over top of it. All right, so first thing we're going to do is get some marmorino on a trial. Then we're going to apply a bag coat, our first coat. Now, this coat just has to be 100% coverage uh, with no trial marks. Nothing. Actually, back that up. I'm not paying attention to myself here because I'm just too excited to do the finish because I love marmorino plaster. We're going to put this on probably about not probably about. We're going to put this on about an eighth of an inch thick. So it's fairly thick. We definitely don't want any trial marks to so try to avoid those. Hear that aggregate? That's part of the aggregate part of it too is that quartz primer has a, a lot of aggregate in it. Ah, aggregate aggregate in it as well to give it to tooth so the plaster sticks versus slide. It's almost like a fine piece of sandpaper on that wall. I'm just going to go back and get some of these trial marks out of here like so. And then while it's still wet Oh man, came off my trial and landed right on the spatula handle. Daggone it. Let's hammer on. I don't feel like getting up to wash it at the moment. Alright, so we're going to put this on, as I said, about an eighth of an inch thick. Still need more. Plaster all over my hand. Ugh. It's uh, uh, plaster all over your hand. You want to wash it off as quickly as you can because that will burn after a while. Remember, it's lime. Lime is caustic in its wet form. So don't leave it sit there too long. And definitely protect your eyes when you're uh, stirring. Get rid of these trial marks. Like so. Right on. Okay, now what we're going to do is take our pitted roller. It's a roller with little pits all over it. Check it out. And what we're going to do is just roll. Uh oh. Yeah, this is fine. See that I can roll this in any direction. And the cool thing is, you can't really see how I rolled it. All right. Now, we're going to have to let this firm up. It'll be about 20% dry. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to knock it down. So I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, so our pitted plaster, the Marmorino, has gotten to the point where we can come in with a trial and using a very light pressure, knock down some of the texture, knocking it back. All right. You're going to get some areas, see how it's crumbling a little bit? That's just kind of how it goes. It's not the end of the world. Just relax. But use a very light touch. If you see a lot of that crumbling, just back off. What it is is it's just not quite dry enough in those spots, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we're not trying to flatten it completely. We're leaving. I'll bring it over so you can see it better. But 
the texture's there, but we just don't want it to be rounded over. We want it to be flat on the top. So we're just knocking down the high spots. It's a very light touch. But yeah, this, this area here, see this where it crumbled? It just wasn't dry enough. It had a skin over the top, but it wasn't really completely firm enough or dry enough. But it's going to work to our advantage because this is an old world distress look. Not distress, but it's a very old look. That's all we're trying to do. So I'll bring it in so you can see it. Okay? So instead of having little mountains, look at that. See how it's flat on the tippy top? Alright, see if you can see it. Hopefully, yeah, you can see it. So it's not rounded over, they're all flat. Alright, so now we have to let this dry 100% overnight. And we'll, uh, whoop, back up here. We have to let this dry 100% overnight, and we'll come back and uh, do our next step. See you in a bit. Alright, so the knockdown marmarino is completely dry. We're ready to move on. What we're going to do is get some more marmarino. And create, we're going to just put it on, knock it around like so, creating this old, like an old broken look, is what the plan is. So we're just going to put some on there, and it's going on pretty thick, because I am getting rid of a lot of that. You don't even see the, uh, the texture underneath, you know, I just pile it down. Now this is really up to you as to how much or how little of the pitted marmarino you want to be exposed on your finish. Now I'm going to pull it pretty tight too. See that? That's all that is to that. Now, we'll let that dry, and then come back for the next step in the application. All right, and that's going to be overnight. The only downside to these finishes, they do have to go overnight. So, but when you're doing big walls and whole rooms, you don't have to worry about like time because you're eating it up, which is doing the actual work. All right, let's see in a little bit. All right, the marmarino is dried up, so or not dried up, but dried overnight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, a sea sponge. This guy here, seen better days, still work. And I'm going to take some of the lime glaze in a soft, soft, soft uh, color. And it's going to kind of rub it in. Very light color. It's, um, I think it's called, I can't remember the name of this, sunflower small circles rubbing it in and instead of using a brush the reason I'm sponging is because it will kind of get caught not kind of it will get caught in the crevices there so that'll work to our advantage where you know in other videos you've seen me brush it on rag it off but that's a regular glaze a different technique all the way diff completely different technique let's see I'm doing a circular pattern that way if I were to make a mistake, you don't see lines. Now I also dampen this sponge. So what I'm doing is the lime glaze is an interior exterior product. It's for lime products only, lime plasters. Tints with lime compatible pigments, pigments. Yeah. Let's see what else. Cleans up with soap and water. Yeah, lime compatible pigments. Cleans up soap and water. Mm -hmm. Interior, exterior. Uh, you have to wait until if you want to do layers, which we're going to kind of do here in a little bit, or in the next step. You have to wait till each coat is finished drying to do the layers, or else it'll reactivate and uh, lift it. We don't want that. 
I was doing a bigger wall, I'd be definitely using a much larger sponge. I'd actually probably use one of my sponge trials. And you can uh, expect to burn through the material for your sponges because this is a very rough plaster. That's it for that step. Rinse your sponge out when you're finished. Synthetic sponges probably would be a better choice. They're less ex because they're less expensive. We'll do the same thing. So we're going to let this dry 100%. Come back, do our next color. See a little bit. Okay, so our soft yellow uh, is completely dried. It's a very soft, delicate color. Now we're going to get into a, uh, a little darker color. Back to the sea sponge, still with the lime glaze. And this has a, just basically, uh, it's an olive color. And what I want to do is just kind of See how far it goes. I just want to give it a hint of it. I don't want to go too crazy. Definitely going to put it in that texture. I want it to get caught up in there. Really bring that texture out. Whoops. That's a no no. Sponge is just getting more out. Yeah, see, it really makes that texture jump. Walk it around out here. Now, you can't get this confused. Do not confuse this with traditional glazing techniques. Different material completely. The techniques are a little bit different. I'm not going to do 100% coverage on this. You know, it kind of looked like it. I'm just kind of. I kind of, I'm hit, I gotta stop saying that. I'm hitting that texture. I really want that texture to pop. And just some of the other areas. Now, the neat thing is, you rinse your sponge out, get all the color out of it. You can go back into this and do some negative work if you want, because it's still damp. So we could pull off if we're not, if we wanna bring that yellow, that soft buttercup color back. See that? Possibilities are endless. It's going to just give us that nice, beautiful, old world looking wall. All right, let's let this dry, come back, and we might even play with, not might, we're going to play with the third color. See in a bit. Three. Three, two, one. All right, so the second color of Lime Blaze is set up. I'm gonna get into this burnt umber color that we have here. Actually, I don't think it's burnt umber, I think it's Castle Earth. I will make sure before I say that uh, and put it in the descriptions. Redo, three, two, one. Okay, so the second color of Lime Glaze is set up and dried. Now I'm gonna get into my next color, which is still the Lime Glaze, and it's the Castle Earth. And I'm just gonna kinda hit my texture. Just want to focus on the texture. Just a little bit. All I'm doing is dipping my sponge. I'm working out of a cup with the glaze in it. Bring it. Ooh, just because I don't want to tint up a whole gallon for this. It does come in quarts, but I just don't have any quarts. But I'll tint it up into smaller containers and work out of those when I'm making samples. And again, just kind of... I can kind of just hit that texture. I really want that texture to have some interest to it. just a little bit so I get too much here so now I'll come back with a damp sponge and pull it off 
areas I don't want it. So I can kind of, it's very forgiving. I just want this to get caught in those textures. So, and I'm not even like smashing it. So I put it on there and I take the other side of the sponge, which is just damp, pull it off. So one side has the material, the other side somewhat clean. Just wring it out. Got way too much on the sponge that time. Got away from me. Nothing's a big deal. Just gonna punch it up. So we got all these under, so now I'm just gonna kinda lightly go over the whole thing. Then I'm gonna come back with this clean side and just pounce out the flat areas. So when I pounce it, it's gonna be using the, neg the water and the sponge. Negative technique. And what that's gonna do is create a whole different look of texture. Because I did put a little, I put the brown, or the, yeah, the, the brown color over the whole thing. But when I go over it and pull it off, because you got a lot of working time with the lime glaze, a lot of working time. You can, uh, it'll create a whole different look. And the beauty of this is, so the beauty, one of the beauties of lime products is that mold and mildew don't grow on it. So it's a very safe, and, uh, not so, it's a very healthy, product to have on your walls. It does breathe, which is nice. So if you have a house that was built and designed to breathe, if you're in a climate like that, the plaster will breathe, meaning air will pass through. Obviously I'm peeling the tape off so I can show you the final, final look. Try not to mess up the glaze. I guess I should have should just let this dry before I get into it. But we're already halfway into it. But you can see when you're doing this in, a, in your house or in somebody else's house, be careful. See how that plaster just peels off? It's very hard, very brittle. And it will make a mess when you're peeling tape. See that? It, look, see it's on the tape, but when I pull the tape, there's nothing there because without that primer, this will not stick to anything but the primer. If you try it any other way, you're, you're, you're test tempting fate. I had a, a customer that I sold plaster to, did a restaurant down in Virginia. They did everything right and they rushed it at the very last minute because they ran out of primer, thinking they could just get away with it. Well, under the bar, where everybody was sitting, that was the area like, ah, what's, if we have to cheat, we'll cheat here. Worst possible place to ever cheat because people are feet are kicking and all that good stuff. Man, that pop plaster just popped and peeled. All right, check it out. There we go. Look at that. Look how pretty. See all that texture? See that? Look how beautiful that is. Gorgeous, old world look. See it? Sorry, I gotta look over here so I can see. There you go, that's it. That's just one of the possibilities of Marmarino and Lime Glaze. All right. Hey, I wanna go home and decorate a wall somewhere. Hmm. All right, there you go, that's it. Um, let it dry 24 hours. If you wanna hang things on top of it for whatever reason, you can. Touching it up. Good. You're not really going to touch this up. So. That's it though. There you have it. Marmarino Lime Glaze Tricolor Layered. We'll come up with a fancy name for it another time. 
But there you have it. All right, I want to thank you for watching. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. In